was uh, moved to uh, Mauser in Obendorf. And so in the mid 1930s, Mauser started making Lugers. The BYF. Well, no. The, the original uh, Mauser Lugers were not BYF. They were, some of them were what's called Mauser Banner Lugers with the Mauser Banner on top of the toggle. Mm -hmm. And then they went into the, uh, the uh, K date and the G-Date Luger, they started hiding. In other words, once the Nazis took over, they brought out their code system to try to hide who was making what. So, uh, the, uh, in the early 1930s, when Mauser started making these Lugers, they made them uh, with Mauser banners and uh, other symbols on top. And then in 1934, 1935, they came out, well, in 1936, they came out with the K date and the G date, which is one is one is 35 and one is 36. And instead of putting 1936 on the top, it had a G or a K. The, the K is extremely rare and very expensive. The, I have a G date, which is 1936. And after 1936, uh, then they made 37, 38, 39, and 40 uh, dated Lugers with the date right there. Which I've seen. And with 1938, 1937, 19, I, for instance, I got a 1937. Then they made 1940s with also the four digits there. In 1941, they switched to the BYF code. And the reason this call is called the Black Widow is because of the black finish. They also, in 1940, they stopped oh, no heat, no more straw color, and they put these black Bakelite grips on them. So this combination, you can see how that could become known as the Black Widow. And then in 1942, they also made these, and you could you could get these with. Brown, gri brown wooden grips or black Bakelite grips. If they were black, they were called black widows. If they're brown, they're called brown recluses. <laughs> so this is a this is a 1941 Mauser Luger, and then after 1942, they stopped making uh, wall, uh, Lugers completely officially because they switched to the uh, P38. I see. Uh, for the rest of the war, they did assemble Luger piece parts and kept making them, but officially 1942 was the last year the Germans made Lugers. Now the Swiss kept making them. By then, the Swiss were making their own Lugers at Bern, and they made Lugers through 1945 or 6, and then they stopped, and those were the last Lugers. So really, the Swiss government made the last Lugers. But these, this is a 1941 Mauser uh, Luger, 9 millimeter black Widow. And the, it gets, really, the, the finish and the grips. Does the magazine number to the gun like these? No, but no, because they stopped doing that. Okay. Uh, this is the official Black Widow magazine. It's extruded. It's It's got FXO and Eagle 37. FXO was the code name for the Heinel uh, 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 weapons manufacturing uh, facility in Sewell. Heinel made uh, MP40s, mm -hmm. um, and they made a lot of magazines, but the Heinel code is FXO, and, and their Waffenop number with the inspector at the plant, the captain at the plant, his code was 37. You know, all these Waffenop codes that you find on these German weapons, the code is not the factory. The code the belongs inspector. to the officer or staff and CO inspector there. If he or she were, you know, there were no she's, if he were transferred during the war, the code went with him. And you can find weapons made in different locations with the same code number on them, and that just tells you the officer was transferred. It wasn't very common. In most cases, the officer stayed in that area. And depending on, if it was something like this, there was just probably that officer that had code 37 probably was only only did the Heinel plant because Heinel made uh, K98s, they made MP, they made MP40s and MP38s, I believe. They made uh, parts for the Sturmgewehr. They made all these magazines. 
it was a big enough place to keep one officer and his team fully occupied. Some of the codes you can find at eight or nine or different, ten different plants because they were small enough that one team of inspectors could cover them all. I see. But no, this is this is the the, the, the correct max. Mm -hmm. and Interesting. And in up to 1940, uh, in World War One. In the 20s and early 30s, all magazine bottoms were wood and numbered to the gun. In the late 1930s, Mauser started putting aluminum-based magazines. So did Krieghoff. Uh, so Simpson and Company did some of the same thing, but uh, uh, the magazine bottoms were aluminum and numbered to the gun. In 1940, the war effort. Uh, 4041 time frame, might have been, I think it was June 41, the German government said, okay, no more aluminum for this type of material. So that's when they switched to the Bakelite and they stopped numbering the magazines to the guns. Hmm. This would have come with two of these, uh, just like, and this, these are the real nice extruded in a holster. FXO. Yeah, it would have been issued, and the holster, of course, could have come from any one of about 350 holster makers. Did they come with an extra firing pin and cleaning rod? The holster came with a tool and a pin, pin punch, and it might, they might have been, I, I don't think they came from the factory with an extra cleaning, uh, extra uh, firing pin, I don't think, maybe some of them did, but they probably stopped doing that, and, and at some point the, uh, you know, the ar the unit armors had the stock of firing pins, and if a firing pin broke, um, this firing pin, I believe, is, everything is numbered to the gun, and I, I believe when I disassemble, I'm almost certain when I disassemble this, the firing pin is serialized to the gun. Um, there's a way you can tell whether these grips are fake or not. I, I can tell by looking at them, these are gun. The man I got this from lived in Texas. He'd had this about 25 years, and it's never been touched. It's got a little bit of holster wear mm -hmm. right across there. I like it. But it's got no, it's got no, uh, no bad stuff at all. Well, I like it. Yeah. Well, I thought you would. I thought you would. That's probably the nicest thing I thought. You would.